Okay, let's continue with the properties of our n. The fifth property says that every element in our n has a negative so that the sum of this element and its negative is always the zero vector. This is true because for every n tuple, v sub 1, v sub 2, etc., v sub n of real numbers, we can always define the negative of the element to be the n tuple with the negative of all the components of v. And this n tuple is, of course, still an element of our n. And the sum of these two elements of our n is going to be is going to be the zero vector n tuple of all zeros. The sixth property says that for any scalar c and any element v of our n, the scalar multiple of c and v is still in our n. Here, by a scalar, we mean a real number. And this property has to hold for any real number c. And this property is true because for any n tuple, v sub 1, v sub 2, to v sub n, those components are all real numbers. And for any real number c, the scalar multiple is an n tuple of the real numbers c v sub 1, c v sub 2, etc., c v sub n, and is again our n. This property is called the closed under scalar multiplication property. So Rn is closed under scalar multiplication for real scalars. Okay, six down, four to go. The seventh property says for any scalar C, again a real scalar, and any two elements u and v of Rn, the distributive law of scalar multiplication holds. So the scalar multiple of c and the sum of u and v is equal to the sum of the scalar multiple of u and the scalar multiple of v. The eighth property is also about the distributive law of scalar multiplication, but in a different way. So if you have any two scalars, and an element u of Rn, then the scalar multiple of a plus b and u is equal to the sum of au and bu. The ninth property says, again, for any two scalars a and b and an element u of Rn, the scalar multiple of b with au is equal to the scalar multiple of ab and u. In other words, there is a associative law of scalar multiplication. And last but not least, for any element u in Rn and the scalar 1, then the scalar multiple of 1 and u is equal to the vector u itself. As you can easily verify by yourself, these properties are again true because the scalar multiplication is defined component-wise. So the distributive law of addition and the associative law of multiplication and the property of number one carry over here. So here are the 10 properties of Rn that we're going to use to define a vector space and to extend the concept of vectors to a more abstract level by thinking about what really makes vectors vectors. So we will talk about the concepts and examples of general vector spaces in the following video.